Hey everyone, welcome back. So previous video on this channel, we talked about loading the image data from one of my favorite professor from Chicago Booth. And what he's saying is, hey, look, we got picture data, right? We're taking screenshot of bar chart of stock data and let's assign some labels. Here, let's plot this visualization in front of us. We have bar chart for the stock here. And this is essentially 6,000 stocks in a state universe. On top of that, let's also collect the labels. Labels is the next five day returns based off these bar chart collected in that screenshot. So here's our problem statement. Goal is simple. The goal is to build a model, specifically some sort of a convolutional neural network model to read the image and learn to predict that label. That's the problem statement. That's the first step. Let's get that done. So in this video, we're going to walk through a very basic model to help us start the workflow. The model that we're going to be talking about is a very basic convolutional neural network. We're going to start with defining X and Y. So as discussed before, let me just show you the code. We have X defined as the images, Y defined as binary version of whether the stock in the next five days will turn positive or not. So here I converted this using two categorical function in TensorFlow, and I essentially compare that with zero. If it's greater than zero, then it's positive. Otherwise, it's negative return. So in this case, I converted a regression problem into a classification problem, just so that modeling part is a little bit easier. And the definition of that problem statement is a little bit more straightforward. With that being said, I have our X, I have our Y, let's go ahead and build a model. So first things first is we're gonna import TensorFlow. After that, we're gonna essentially build an architect. So we're gonna start with the model equals to PF as TensorFlow. And then we say models sequential. So we're gonna use sequential API and then we're gonna essentially adding layers line by line. And as you can see this hint here from the CoLab Copilot, which is very powerful. That's pretty much what I want. So I'm essentially just going to go into my notes and get the code out. And boom, that's my code. Here I add one layer of convolutional layer, very simple, just to get us started. This 32 means the number of filters I want to use in that convolutional layer. Kernel size, three by three. That's the window size of each of the filter. And we're going to activate it with a value activation. And we're going to set input shape at 64 by 60 by one. 64 by 60 is not some arbitrary number that I want. Previous video, we talked about it. That is the dimension of the image data instructed by the paper from the professor. So we take that as granted because that's how the data is collected. One here means that the data is black and white. We're not talking about three channels, RGB, as if the data are color pictures. We're only talking about black and white as binary values. Flatten it, send it into a dense layer. Here we have two units as the output, meaning that we want the output to predict something that's true or false, positive or negative. But in this case, positive means the return is plus, and otherwise, if it's negative, then the return is not plus, right? It's a negative return. So that is essentially how the model works. The next step is to compile it and then fit it. So let's get the coding here. Let's do model.compile. We're going to do optimizer as SGD. So the optimizer is an algorithm that goes into the model and change the weights. But it changed the weights according to some sort of objective function. And that's precisely what the last function here is referring to. Here, we're going to use binary cross entropy, the go to loss function when you have a binary classification problem. Uh, don't forget the metrics here. We're going to set as an accuracy. Boom, there you go. The last line of code I need here is to do some sort of model.fit. But the caveat here is that it's an image data. So I don't want to just do model.fit because that will take forever, right? Here, I want to use GPU. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the GPU device, make sure I have everything I need. And boom, there you go. That says I have a GPU device there, index zero. That's great. Now I just need to do a model.fit, but under that GPU device. So I say with tf.device, and that's the name that's given me here from the previous line of code. That's the name of that GPU. And then I do model.fit. So if I run this, it will start training. 
And then from here, we're just going to have to wait for the model to finish training. Okay, so now it finishes training. And looking at this training performance, it is actually not the worst model. Because for two class classification, it is actually like a coin toss if the model hasn't really learned anything, right? Think about if I give you some sort of true and false problem sets. If you have no idea what the problem is asking and you just check each answer randomly, you're going to get 50%, right? Because it's a coin toss. And the expected value for a coin toss experiment should be 50%. But what we see here is actually not 50%. Right. If you look at the performance of training from first round, right? When I say run, I'm talking about the first epoch. So from the first epoch, we're seeing 58 on the validation set accuracy. And then essentially the second round, third round, it goes about 60%. And from here, it actually plateaus for a while until the 30 epoch when we finish the experiment. So I think 60% is somewhat honest result here for two reasons. Number one, we're looking at the validation set accuracy. We're not just looking at the training accuracy because training accuracy, we're just gonna go straight up, right? As you can see here, 64%, 65%, that sort of thing. Reason number two is this actually plateaus for a while, meaning that, hey, you know, we're probably hitting some sort of bottleneck given this data, given this model architecture, and this is probably the best we can do. So because 60% is not 50%, that means there's a little bit of a 10% signal there that this model is actually able to capture. It's not the best case scenario. I will not trade off 60% accuracy, but still this experiment show us that, hey, something's going on here that perhaps is worth our attention. So that's what this experiment is showing you. Obviously for future episodes, we're gonna come back here. We're gonna use some other model that's a bit more complicated than just two or three lines of code. This is obviously too simple. So hopefully that gives you some sort of a content of how to take image data, send into some sort of neural network model and have it hit some sort of accuracy that you have some confidence that it's honest and perhaps it's not random guessing. So let me show you how many stocks there are in the data set. So if you run label DF stock ID, and then you check the number of unique levels, here you see this output says 6,049. So that essentially is over 6,000 stocks in this database, right? Whatever image that we're looking at here, there's a stock ID attached to those images, and you look at the unique number, it's 6,049. That pretty much means almost all the stocks are in there because near stock change plus NASDAQ altogether, it's about 6,000 stocks. So now we can probably have some sort of strategy, right? We can look at this data and we can make a prediction of the next five days of return. And if it gives us a positive, that means next five days probably going to be positive. Let's create a trading strategy holding those stocks. So out of the 6,000 stocks, you can probably cut half, right? The one half, it's the return of next five days being positive the other half being negative. And then a portfolio can be constructed holding those stocks. Of those 6,000 pool of stocks, if the AI tells you the next five days is positive. So next video, we're going to come back here. We're going to see how to create that algorithm. And then we're going to run some back tests to see what is the sharp ratio. With that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one.